the stock market, meaning companies, new highs. I'm not fucking leaving. The show goes on. An online network called Internet. Well, it's very hip to be on the Internet right now. Welcome, my degenerates. The rest of your life starts right now on Market Mania. The no bullshit approach to all financial markets, from Bitcoin and dark nets to political betting. And of course, the largest casino in the world, the U.S. stock market. I'm your host, Brian Mikon, financial genius, Bitcoin class of 2011, and I play poker. Joining me are my fellow DGens, Matt Glantz and Brett Ritchie. Glantz traded options back in the day, and Brett is the head of Blitzpick, coming to a blockchain near you this fall. The whole thing is put together by Tony, the producer, and this is Market Mania. Tony, let's get right to it. Hell of a day in the markets today. Glance, the options fund. How you doing today? We're doing pretty good today. Today is a good day. We we came in long NVIDIA and Tesla. They're both up pretty good, especially NVIDIA. Um, and the market's just roaring on hopes of stimulus. We'll see how it goes this week. What are you, what's going on over there in the in the Robinhood world there, Brett? Uh, things are pretty good, right? The market's up. Things are good for the Robinhood world. And I actually am loading some money onto Robinhood to do my own portfolio, tracking a lot of the picks we give out on Market Mania. So look for that later this week. Love it. Nice. Uh, gotta love Brett jumping in here hard <laughs> with the Robinhood deposit. Love it. The lead story today is got to be the election. Trump got the COVID after the old debates there. And then, you know, Mark Committee was off for a couple of days, but now we're back, baby. And then Donald Trump plus 153 is what I see, minus 180 on Biden. That's kind of a big spread over there. What do you got? What, what did you see with the Trump COVID moves, boys? Well, I think it's interesting that this market, he was maybe what, plus 130, plus 120 going into the debates. It hasn't shifted as dramatically as you would think, given what happened with Trump getting COVID. A lot of the coverage has been pretty negative as to how he's handled it, both for the country, for himself. He was riding around in a car yesterday. People didn't seem to like that. I think, honestly, no matter what he does, there's going to be people up in arms, outraged. Uh, I think I'm surprised it hasn't moved more about what do you think? Yeah, well, when he got COVID that night, the market jumped up real quick and Donald was uh, plus 200 because, you know, who knows, who knew if he was going to get real sick and not be able to run. Um, but later that night, it started coming down by the next morning. It was back down to here. The mid was around 165. So we're right there again. We'll see. It's I think I think he's in trouble unless uh, Biden gets the COVID too. If Biden gets the code of COVID, then everything's off the rails. Well, he it's hard to get it if he just stays in his basement as he's been doing <laughs> one thing i think that's pretty interesting everyone i know for the most part a lot of sharp gamblers are just firing biden and the line's not really moving i haven't seen a lot of trump activity so there is money coming in on trump a lot of money this is a big market and i'm not sure where it's coming from but maybe they watch market mania because i was touting trump last week one, i don't know one thing you say there brett is very clear very clear because i trade a lot of markets uh political markets all the sharp betters are betting Biden, and none of the sharp betters are betting Trump. Yeah, well, they bet Hillary. They all loaded up on Hillary too. So all the true how, believers are betting for, for Trump. The true uh, believers. No, no. In 2016, yeah, have, you could go back to the Twitter and check my Twitter. I was, I was 80, not, 90 percent not believing of were, Hillary's going to win. People is, were in OTC. Different. People were laying like minus 700 when she was minus 400 or 500 in public markets to get more down OTC because they just thought she was such, such a lock. Oh, At some point, right. we'll have to describe the difference between 2016 and today. We're going to have to make some sort of a wager here on Market Mania because it looks like we got the old dinner table here where you got you know your aunt, your aunt uh, Sally over there screaming about her Bernie Antifa ideas, and you got Uncle Joe over there screaming that you know you got to lock them up. So now, markets one fifty three and minus one eighty. It moved there. Trump got the COVID. He took a ride in the car. The stock market, though, what did this do to the stock market? It looks like the weekend Trump COVID report was good, I guess, for the market. I'm not exactly sure if that's moving it here. But we got a pump today, don't we? 
Yeah, I mean, Trump basically beat it, it seems. He's going to be fine. And there's always going to be a little uncertainty in the market when the president ha is potentially fatally ill, even though it's like 0. 0.00 something percent chance. Um, yeah, I think people aren't too worried about Biden winning, especially I think if the Democrats sweep, there's a lot of hopes for sort of the stimulus throughout the economy. So people aren't as worried about Biden as you would think for the market. Matt Glantz. The markets, they originally sold off when Trump got the COVID, but it was like kind of a 21 gun salute it didn't seem to hold. It didn't like tank the market, send, it, send us into a downward movement. So, it yeah, looks so here's like it what happened. Back, right? Here's what's happened and here's what's going on. So Thursday night when the new, he, he posted a tweet that he had COVID at like 12.54 a.m. or something like that. Futures immediately tanked like over 2%, um, that, which is a big move in the futures, S&P futures overnight. Um, that morning we came in, the market was starting to, to bounce a little bit as there were signs that he was doing a little bit better. It wasn't because he's going to lose the election necessarily the market was down. It's because the uncertainty of the election, which makes people nervous and they just want to get out of risk assets. So it was like a risk off day. Um, mo most of the day on Friday, we bounced back. And then it looks like, every, you know, this weekend, all the news is positive on his health. And but it does. But because of this situation, his market dropped a little bit over the weekend. So now he's plus 165, and there's more of a case for a clean sweep for the Democrats now. The, the, the clean sweep for the Democrats is a favorite, so the House, Senate, and President. And if that happens, you know, people don't realize, even though we're going to see an increase in corporate taxes, which would be bad for the market, there's going to be an overwhelming supply of liquidity. They're going to pump the Dems. will just pump, pump, pump the market. Spending Brett, what do you think? This, yeah. this guy took a ride in a car under full yeah. COVID. He guy took a ride Who in the cares? car. Stocks go up. Stocks go yeah. up on that news. What, what? It just, the Do guy a plane ride a next, man. You got to own the libs. Like who cares? There's a the million reasons to be mad at Trump for the things right. he does. Riding in a car is not one of them. Guys, the more chance of stimulus is the better, the, the more likely the stock market's going to go up. So that's what it is. A yeah. more chance of a clean sweep of the Democrats, you know, they're just going to spend and pump people with stimulus it's great for the yeah. markets a contested sure election turn. would be bad right if 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 the trump wins day one but then the the results come in from mail by vote by mail now biden wins that's bad for the market uncertainty is very bad as yeah. brett says yeah uh get your november six options locked and loaded boys this is going to move the the next 30 something days are going to move these markets one way or another Moving on to our scam check-in of the day, we have Nicola briefly back on in the news on hit zero hedges radar, looks like uh, a couple of days, or no, today. And it was about Nicola targeting critical YouTubers, <laughs> it seems like, because they kept replaying the in motion uh, advertising video where they famously rolled a truck that didn't have a working engine down a big ass hill and then said, look, the Nikola machine is in motion. Now it's not really driven by anything that we designed or anything, but we did, it is in motion. And then people are just obviously demolished them on YouTube. Everybody took the victory lap for the last couple of weeks. And it looks like they went after some of these YouTubers for talking shit. Brett Ritchie, this doesn't work, does it? No, it's sand effect. I think that's, the headline says it all. Don't do this, right? It's just, but I don't know. I mean, they have so much bad press already. I don't know how much it even moves the needle. I mean, Matt Glantz, you got, you know, you don't go after the YouTubers, do you? I mean, like, that's, that ain't going to end well. Then they all show the, you know, the takedown requests and that, uh, you know, it's a bitch move. Seems like if you got your lawyers and focus on that, you got other problems that you're not dealing with that you should be more focused on. Guys just screaming at him, take down those YouTubers. You got to <laughs> get it out there saying that we pushed it down and we did. All right, moving along. Now, Matt, I can't wait to hear what you got on this. Pen and DraftKing warnings. All right, we got warnings on both Pen and okay. DraftKings. So they're, they're not warning. I'm saying there's warning signs for Pen and DraftKings. So you remember last week, Pen issued a secondary, bunch, millions of shares. They raised a billion dollars. So they went. It, it did real well. The stock didn't really get hit. Uh, DraftKings saw that. Now they issued they issued their secondary today. 16 million shares. Um, they're selling for the company, and then another 16 million from insiders, which really concerned me. Um, these guys are like, sell, you know, selling equity, especially the insider. It's one thing to have a secondary to raise capital, but 16 million shares from the insiders when lockup comes off in two weeks anyway. 
So why are they uh, issuing a secondary and at the same time selling shares from insiders when they'll be able to, to sell their shares in, uh, after lockups over in a couple of weeks? What's your, what, what's your thoughts on that, Brett? Is that yeah, scary that, to you? That's a little uh, alarming, as you say, when you talk about the insiders sort of selling right ahead of this lockup period. It'd be hard to be long the stock knowing that. It seems like they expect a lot of other people to sell also. I mean, it has gone up, what, 5x? since it was listed or something right. like that. It's, it's gone on quite a nice run. So it makes sense people would want some liquidity out of that. So, so Penn 70 now, and these with these warning signs, I, I think this thing's gonna be below 60 within a couple of weeks, uh, right before the lockup. So we'll see what happens, but it's, it's a big warning sign for me. I would get out now and look to buy in, buy in cheaper in a couple of weeks. Can't understand the valuation of either personally. I mean, how all those pen casinos are closed. I realize they got Portnoy. That is a huge asset. The Barstool app is is live. I get it. But I mean, just it's you know you pumped 10x since the you know since since the bottoms earlier this year and double since pre-pandemic. I don't know if that much value has been added in pen and DraftKings has got. I mean that thing is just on a run like like Brett said. I mean it just keeps doubling. And I mean at some point you look down at a twenty something billion dollar valuation and think well. You know, are you really going to, are people really going to fire high rake football for that long in that number? I don't know. We will watch it here. One other thing that we have our eye on here at Market Mania is the crypto world. Mt. Gox, for those of you old school enough to remember, the formerly largest Bitcoin exchange in the world. Huge headshot hack. Mark Carpellis, who used PHP and he didn't secure it. And then they just, somebody LOL'd all the Bitcoins out at a very early time for the space. And then since that point, there's been an incredible series of fuckery that we can't possibly pack into this show. But there was some were found, then 200,000 Bitcoins LOL'd back. And then Carpell said, hey, here you go. The Japanese authorities are in charge of this one. They still, they have 150,000 coins. They have them, the Japanese have them. And they've been running this ridiculous process to try to make any harmed parties whole that's taken years and years and years. And the price of the coin has went up and up and up. And uh, it's the fuckery that keeps on giving. The word on the street is that, well, maybe these 150,000 Bitcoins are gonna be sold on the open market to make the, because in Japan, I guess you settle in fiat. Brett Ritchie, you're in the crypto space. What do you think about this? Mt. Gox, is it going to come back to keep, is it the gift that I mean, keeps on giving? Keeps fucking so you year I, the, after year? I, I think so. I mean, A, like if you have coins there, obviously probably should have just written it off a long time ago. If you get anything back, that's a positive thing. I believe there's some asshole that is like holding things up too with some lawsuit claiming that he invested or owned a piece of Mt. Gox. Just a total scammer, just looking to try and... Um, capitalize on it because Bitcoin went up so much. Mt. Gox actually has more than what the Bitcoins were worth at the time of the hack. They could pay everyone back sort of their full value and have money left over. I think Mark Carpelez at some point was going to be a billionaire if they did that because the surplus value of Bitcoin was so high if you just got cash value back. I don't know. I don't pay a whole lot of attention to it. I'm fortunate enough not to have money tied up there. We'll see. Matt Glantz unregulated exchanges from eight years ago that used to trade uh, digital, um, it was uh, Magic the Gathering cards that switched to Bitcoin. <laughs> How much of your net worth would you have sailed into that? I don't know. This this old Mt. Gox, Bitcoin, it's all nuts to me. <laughs> I'm going to just keep <laughs> folks in the stock market. <laughs> ah, ah, shenanigans assets in brand new asset classes. Gotta <laughs> love them. Moving along to the traditional uncorrelated asset that the world usually would have referred to before Bitcoin. Gold. The gold ETF is in play today. And it looks like, now this doesn't, does this exactly track the price of gold or is this the the basket of yeah, gold I mean, companies it, and all the... It's based, it's an ETF of, of gold, but it tracks the price of gold very, very closely. Um, gold, Last night in the futures market was down like 10 bucks. It was under 1900 for a little bit, uh, even with the S&P futures up, which has been uh, positively correlated lately. But last night it wasn't. They turned around. Gold's now up $10 in the day. GLD is about, what is it, 1, 8, 
Um, it looks like they might have it be turning around the commodities. I think oil's up today. Some of the other commodities are, are flying. Um, it looks like with this stimulus in the air, if Pelosi and Mnuchin get together, get the stimulus out and people start feeling good about themselves, especially with that Bitcoin news last week where the U.S. government's kind of cracking down on BitMEX, might be some people looking to get out of uh, Bitcoin and move into gold. So I think there's an opportunity there to look at. We'll see what happens over the next couple of weeks. Brett Ritchie, BitMEX news hit. Shout to Arthur. Good luck, fam. What do you think? You think people are dumping the coin to get the more traditional gold here? They want they want out of the USD? I feel the gold buyers and Bitcoin buyers are not necessary. There's not a huge overlap there. I, uh, it's a very similar sort of investor profile, but a lot of people are kind of one or the other. I know a lot of gold buyers are like Bitcoin's a scam. A lot of Bitcoin buyers are like, well, this is the new gold. Old, you know, there's no upside left in gold. So for me, I don't really pay attention to gold, but I do love Ron Paul, who I'm glad to see is doing well. He's a big fan of gold. So I always sort of cheer for gold on the sidelines because of him. That's fair. Now, we have a very special part of the Market Mania show. First time ever. Tony, the producer, can we please pull up the Market Mania $100 crypto giveaway? We're throwing it out. You know, it's not gold, but... We have an unpicked winner here. A lot of you guys sailed it in. We appreciate that. And then go ahead, Tony, at your leisure. Live. You got it, Live guys. Going. Here we go. This is so exciting. All right. Uh, to have a drum roll in your head. Drawn winners right now. Uh, winners to draw. All One. right. Winners to draw. It's drawing. It's you see, we're not cheaters here. Uh -oh. oh, there it goes. No, going to have to block that email on the old uh -oh. broadcast there. <laughs> Let's get him going. All right. That's your man. Get Daddy it end. off the screen. Daddy Fantastic. Yep. We screen. will. Congrats. Stop. Shout to Daddy N. Appreciate it. You got the hundo coming right towards you. Cape Town, right, South ladies. Africa. Yeah, Send so if, you, if right. you guys need a loan, just email that guy now that we put his email. He has a hundred dollars <laughs> extra. He can loan out to you. Guys. That guy's got a hundred all right. In crypto, ladies. that could turn into a hundred k by the end of the week. <laughs> yeah, you run a whole, and he can choose what he wants. You can choose whatever he wants. We'll get in touch and uh, figure that out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think everybody knows what time it is now. It is safety glasses on for the market mania pick of the day, sponsored by Blitz Pick. Don't waste any time here. Throw it right to Matt Glantz. What's your pick of the day? Sorrento Pharmaceuticals, S-R-N-E. Uh, hopefully Tony can bring up the price here for us. I think it's around 1080. Uh, Monday, they have a, an R&D update for their investors with their pipeline of drugs coming out, especially COVID stuff. So there could be a pump this week going into Friday, coming uh, before that, before the weekend. Uh, Monday's oh. the day. All right, S-R-N-E, don't know anything about it myself. All right, Brett Ritchie, pick of the day. We already kind of covered it on the show, but I like short DraftKings here. Insiders selling a bunch two weeks before the lockup expires is just a bit of a red flag, at least in the near term. I think if you want to hold the stock, just sell it and buy it back in a few weeks. Shout to Aguiar and the boys, get <laughs> your money, son. And my pick of the day is going to be IPOB, the Chamath shenanigans SPAC. Don't know what it's going to buy. This isn't IPOB, the one that got open door. This is IPOC that you just don't know what Chamath is going to buy, but you know it's going to be spicy if you can hold on. So I don't know. We'll do more on SPACs in the future here because they're super duper interesting. All right. We do hope that you have enjoyed the show today and i mean this is one hell of a market to track most of it's on fire as you can see and who knows what's going to happen in three weeks but as jay-z says point out the bounce and show you how to get this dough in large amounts till it's hard to count point out the bounce i turn an eight to an ounce to a whole key to the ROC. Like and subscribe, Market Mania on YouTube, and click the bell to see when we go live. We'll see you tomorrow, if there is a tomorrow. <laughs> but for now, it's lights out.